Welcome to the Yellow Jacket Aerial Terminal Strand Installation video. This video is broken up into two parts, the construction side and the distribution side. Let's look at the steps in the construction side of an installation. When approaching the strand where the Yellow Jacket Terminal will be installed, a double coil of roughly 10 feet of cable will be visible 3 feet from the pole. The Yellow Jacket Terminal should be installed exactly 36 inches from the pole. Using a tape measure, measure 36 inches from the center line of the pole and mark the strand at that point. In this installation, we're using a tie wrap to mark the location. Free the coil of cable on the strand by cutting the tie wraps holding it in place. Move the cable out of the way in preparation for mounting the aerial terminal. Lift the yellow jacket enclosure and hang it on the strand, centering it with the 36 inch mark. A 7 16 inch nut driver or can wrench will be needed to secure the yellow jacket to the strand. Using the 7 16 inch nut driver, loosen the cable clamp on the hanger of the yellow jacket and attach it to the strand, being careful to keep the yellow jacket aerial terminal centered with the mark that was put on the strand. Lift the terminal up and position it in the larger of the two notches. Tighten the clamp. Repeat these steps for the other side of the yellow jacket aerial terminal. Once again, make sure the center line of the yellow jacket is aligned with the 36 inch mark on the strand made earlier. Secure the two clamps tightly once again with the nut driver. Now, the cable will be measured and marked in preparation for sheath removal. It is easiest to work from the pole side first and make a notch in the cable in alignment with the yellow jacket aerial bracket. In this example, we're using snips to place a mark on the outer sheath of the cable. Next, with the cable coming from the other side, make another mark in the cable sheath, aligning it with the other aerial bracket. The cable is now marked and ready to have approximately 10 feet of sheath removed. Do this in accordance with company engineering specifications to prepare it for installation into the Yellow Jacket Aerial Terminal. At this point, the sheath has been completely removed from the 10-foot cable loop. Filler tubes have been taken off and snipped back. Grounding bonds have been installed on the ends of the cable where needed for armored cable and the strength members have been roughly cut down in length. The strength members will be trimmed to exact lengths in an upcoming step. Notice that we have color-coded the incoming and outgoing ends of the cable. This will make identification easier. Before opening up the yellow jacket, tuck the cable behind the enclosure to get it out of the way. There are parts inside the enclosure that could fall out when the front cover is opened. Grasp the top compression clamps and flip them up to unlock the front cover. Carefully pull down the hinged front cover, being careful not to let the instruction booklet and installation kit fall. The Yellow Jacket installation kit is a sealed bag that includes two cable retention clamp assemblies, two bolts for the clamps, four zip ties for the splice tray, and blue felt to put on the buffer tubes when they're put in the tray. Safely store the installation booklet and installation kit before continuing. Now it's time to open the splice compartment. Grab the bulkhead of the distribution panel inner door with one hand and lightly pull it out while unlatching both top tabs of the panel, allowing it to pull downward. With the inner panel lowered, the following items will be visible. A splice tray, a number of splitters, depending on the configuration of the terminal, two strength member tie downs, and end plates. It is recommended at this time to remove both end plates. Pull down the Easy Seal rubber grommets about halfway down. These grommets are glued at the bottom and can only be pulled down so far. Using a 3 8 inch nut driver, loosen the bolt and remove the right side end plate. The bolt is captured in the end plates and will not fall out. Store it safely where it won't be dropped. Repeat this for the left end plate. Mm -hmm. 
Locate the installation kit that was safely stored earlier. Remove the cable retention clamp pieces. For each side, there should be a back piece with a retained nut and a front piece. If the nut has fallen out of the back piece, retrieve it from the bag and put it back into place. Remove the two bolts for the retention clamps as well. Install the right side retention clamp by holding the back piece behind the right side cable just past the ground bond. Place the front piece of the retention clamp over the cable. Attach the two clamp pieces using the bolt provided in the kit and start tightening by hand. Use a 3 8 inch nut driver to tighten the retention clamp bolt more while leaving it loose enough that it can still rotate and move slightly on the cable. Repeat this process for the left side retention clamp. Now the strength members will be cut to the required length, which is 2 inches beyond the opening of the cable. This is the exact length required for the strength member to effectively reach the central strength member tie-down point in the enclosure. Measure and cut the strength members on both sides of the cable. The strength member will be going under the washer of the tie-down assembly found in the enclosure. To make things easier, we recommend disconnecting the tie-down assembly hardware from the back wall of the enclosure using a Phillips screwdriver. This will make it easier to properly attach the strength member. Be careful not to drop any of these parts and place them on the ledge in the enclosure. Using a 7 16 inch nut driver, loosen the bolt on the tie-down hardware, being careful not to let it fall out. Place the central strength member under the washer and partially tighten the bolt so the tie-down assembly can still be rotated on the strength member. Once both strength member tie-down assemblies are attached to the strength members but not overly tight, it's time to align everything in the enclosure. The cable retention clamp fits into a slot just past the opening. While holding the retention clamp mounted on the cable in place, put the end plate back into its original position and secure it using a 3 8 inch nut driver. Tighten it just enough so it is snug and not moving around. Repeat the process of aligning the cable retention clamp on the other side of the enclosure, holding it in place while replacing the end plate and tightening the bolt. Reinstall the Phillips screw that attaches the central strength member tie-down hardware to the back of the enclosure. Do this for both sides. If the installation calls for it, ground straps will now be attached to the bond that was placed on the cable. Once this is complete, it's time to finish tightening the end plates, the cable retention clamps, the strength member assemblies, and make sure that the bond strap is tight at the top. Do this for both sides of the enclosure. Once everything is tight, Reinstall the Easy Seal grommets that were pulled down earlier. Do this for both sides. The last step is to connect the ground straps to the ground bar at the bottom of the enclosure. Using a 7 16 inch nut driver, loosen the hex nut. There is one nut and two washers. Take one washer off, attach the ground strap, replace the washer, and tighten the hex nut over it. Repeat this process for the other side. The yellow jacket ground bar is mechanically connected to the aerial brackets which have been attached to the strand, so it will be grounded back at the poles. At this point, identify the fiber or fibers that are needed per the engineering specification. Separate that buffer tube from the bundle and prepare it for a mid-sheath. Now that the buffer tube that will be spliced has been separated, lift the bundles of buffer tubes that are not going to be used up and out of the way for now. Secure them if necessary. Wrap the buffer tube from the right side counterclockwise around the tray. Mark the buffer tube all the way around with a black permanent marker about half an inch past the zip tie location. 
This mark indicates where the buffer tube will be opened in the next step. The buffer tube coming from the left side will wrap clockwise half a loop around. Mark this tube all the way around with a marker a half inch past the zip tie location. Once both buffer tubes are marked, they're ready to have the buffer tube sheath between the two marks removed, exposing the fibers in preparation for splicing. At this point, remove the buffer tube sheath between the marks. Attach felt strips to the buffer tube so they're gripped securely and not crushed by the zip ties, and install the fiber in the tray, securing buffer tubes with tie wraps according to company specifications. Having completed the buffer tube installation and any splicing according to company specifications, be sure to attach the clear cover back on the tray using the four tabs. Lock the tray into position with the end tab and reattach the hook and loop strap around the tray. The last thing that needs to be done is coiling up the unused buffer tubes and securing them with zip ties so they're neat and do not obstruct the inner panel door. Now that everything is stowed neatly, Carefully shut the inner door, being careful not to kink the wire loom. Push the corners of the inner panel door, securing it with the two tabs. Now it's time to close the outer lid of the yellow jacket terminal. There is a groove where the fingers of the compression latches line up. Pull down on both latches to seal the enclosure. Now that the yellow jacket is secure, adjust any cable slack, Put in spacers as needed and resecure the lashing wires as specified by company standards. This concludes the construction side of the Yellow Jacket installation. Now, let's look at the steps for the distribution side of the Yellow Jacket installation on an aerial strand where drop cables are installed. With the drop cable coming up from the living unit, Install a service loop in the drop cable, attaching it to the main cable. Leave about three or four feet of drop cable to work with past the service loop. Open the yellow jacket enclosure so the distribution panel bulkhead is visible. Port number one is the top outer port. Port two is behind it. Port three is the next port down, and port four is behind it. This pattern repeats all the way down to port 16. Bring the drop cable into the enclosure, being sure that it rolls in smooth and neat without a twist. At a spot on the drop cable about a half inch past the tie bars, make a little mark on the cable for reference. Separate the toner wire. The toner wire should not enter the enclosure. Pull back the toner wire so that it does not enter the enclosure and secure it. Consider adding a house tag on the toner wire according to company specifications. Open the end of the drop cable and expose the fiber. In this example installation, using this flat type of drop cable, pull the two strength members down to the reference mark that was made on the cable. When this type of cable is laid in flat, the bottom strength member can be completely cut away. The top strength member needs to be trimmed to go into the little U-shaped dead stop. The selected slot that the drop cable is going into will determine the exact length of the strength member. Go ahead and cut the strength member. The pan head on this Phillips screw is designed to capture the strength member. Additionally, there are two small raised ridges on the distribution panel for each location that assists in gripping the strength member. With the strength member stopped against the U-shaped groove, tighten the panhead screw until it securely holds the drop cable in place. The fiber routing for the distribution is to go under the bulkhead and under these four clips. At this point, terminate the drop cable per company standards and plug it into the associated port. The final step is to install two zip ties around the sheath of the drop cable and the mounting post that has barbs on it. To do that, 
loosely attach a zip tie around the cable and feed it behind the mounting post. Repeat this step for the second zip tie. The inner panel door should never have to be opened to accomplish securing the drop cable with zip ties. Once both zip ties are in place, secure them down onto the sheath. The cable is now secure and the tails of the zip ties can be snipped off. Now that drop cable splicing is done, close the outer lid of the yellow jacket enclosure, aligning the fingers of the compression clamps in the groove at the top of the enclosure and pulling down on the clamps. This completes the distribution side of the installation. Thank you for watching the Yellow Jacket Aerial Terminal Strand Installation video.